Now, what about the secondary reflex? Now, here the problem is not with the kind of the valve mechanism or the intermural length of the ureter or something like that. Here, there is some kind of a distal obstruction, or let's say the bladder is having a in you know, a like more contraction or something else is the cause which is basically leading to a reflex. So let's talk about this. So reflex is caused by an overwhelming the normal function of the ureter vesicle junction. So right, that's fine. So it is we have the ureter vesicle junction but it has its limits. It can prevent the reflex only till one particular point. If at all you kind of push it too hard, that particular limit can be crossed and now the reflex can occur. So that's what they're trying to tell you over here. Now the bladder dysfunction of the congenital uh, kind of uh, congenital acquired or the behavioral nature is often the root cause of the secondary reflex. The most anatomical obstruction of the bladder in the pediatric population is posterior urethral valve. The most common cause of your anatomical obstruction is your posterior urethral valve. And yes, if at all you have a posterior urethral valve, then the reflex can definitely occur. And reflex is present in close to 48 to 70 percent of the patients who are having posterior urethral valve. Important statistics to remember. Okay, so the most common cause of your uh, you know anatomical obstruction in the in a kind of child is posterior urethral valve. And if at all you have that, around, 40, around 50 to 70 percent of the patients might have VUR. Now in the females, the anatomic bladder obstruction is kind of rare. The most common structural obstruction is urethroceal that prolapses into the bladder neck. So here. In the females, if they ask you that, okay, posterior urethral valve is obviously present only in the males because, you know, that is posterior urethral is present only in the males. So when we talk about what is the most common cause of an anatomical obstruction of the urinary tract in the females, in the child, the answer is, you know, that uh, prolapse of the urethroceal, very, very important. Okay, so prolapse of the urethroceal, it can go and it can compress on the bladder neck and if at all this happens, secondary VUR can again occur. But obviously, it is not as common as that of your posterior urethral valve. Now, Neurofunctional causes of the elevated bladder pressure uh, also predisposed to VUR, let's say overactive bladder, as we have told you about that. Okay, so overactive bladder is again a contributory factor for your secondary VUR. Neurogenic bladder is associated with spina bifida and then occult spinal dysgraphism. You can, on the evaluation, you'll find some sacral dimple or, you know, hairy patch, which is basically present over there, or the gluteal cleft or diminished kind of rectal tone or the significant constipation and encopresis, okay? So these all things, if it all you have in the on your physical examination, this should kind of prompt you that, you know what, let's kind of investigate and see whether there's any other spinal cord abnormality present or not. So if at all there is any other spinal cord abnormality, that might be leading to your neurogenic bladder, which would be kind of leading to your vesicoureteral reflex. Please understand this particular point. Now, in the older ch kind of children, acquired abnormalities of the bladder and the bladder function commonly known as bowel and bladder dysfunction have been associated with reflex. So it is essentially the constipation which you basically have in the children, right? So if at all the child is not kind of properly toilet trained or there is a bowel bladder dysfunction, that is again a significant cause of your VUR. So whenever you are managing a patient with a VUR, you always have to make sure that you have kind of ruled out bladder uh, bowel dysfunction and if at all that is there, you have tried your level best to kind of treat it beforehand. Okay, so please remember this particular point guys.